Right, welcome back to MMA Soccer Fight fans. My name is Nate Freeman. Today I'm joined by Steve Panda Banks, who is coming off of a second round knockout victory at BKFC Thailand last weekend. Steve, how you doing today? Feel good, man. Feel good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Um, speaking of your BKFC Thailand fight, it was a rematch of a Muay Thai fight that you had with Akbar Karimi about five years ago or so. Um, yes. Talk to me about, you know, you won the 2017 Muay Thai fight by second round TKO. Yes. Um, talk to me about what your uh, game plan was going into this fight and um, how you saw Karimi as an opponent and all of that. Um, the one thing I actually thought, like, after I, because I'd already fought him in the past, I actually thought that he would come forward right from the get-go, that I did not expect him to sit back the first few seconds and not attack, which actually pissed me off and made me go forward. I was not – I just wasn't not expecting that. He fought way different than when we first fought. Uh, he was a lot more laid back, a lot more calm and relaxed uh, in the rematch, which was definitely a lot something I was not honestly expecting. Yeah, that first fight was wild where, you know, you were throwing each other over the ropes and all of that. It was it was a wild fight, and um, I suggest everybody watch it. But um, going into this fight, you, um, according to yourself, were the lightest that you've been in 25 years. What um, Was there a particular reasoning behind that, why you um, dropped so much weight, or um, was that just something that, you've been meaning to do for a while? Or I've, been mean, I've been meaning to drop the weight anyway. I'd like to get down to where I walk around about 250 because BKFC in the U.S. is 120 kg, 265 pounds. Um, so I need to make sure that I'm under the heavyweight limit. Uh, I move fairly well for a heavyweight, and it also helps out with my cardio. The lighter I am, the better cardio that I have. And that's never necessarily been an issue for you, but um, uh, not, not in about eight years, 10 years now. Um, I actually uh, train cardio five to six days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, and dropping all that weight, I'm sure helps a little bit with the cardio. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, when I first moved to Thailand, I was right at 400 pounds. And then I'm weighing in about 255 right now, 260. Nice. Yeah. Um, so then getting into the fight, um, it sounded like you uh, sort of switched up your game plan a little bit based off of him being more calm and relaxed. And he ended up knocking you down uh, twice in the first round, the first time really sort of in the first few seconds of the fight and then sec right. the second time later in the um, – um Later in the round. If, what if you watch the fight? I had zero head movement in the fight. Um, it because it made me mad that he didn't come forward, that he did not do exactly what I thought he was going to do, and I was expecting him to come forward. Um, so I ended up I ended up fighting not smart. I wasn't moving my head. I wanted him to throw at me because I needed to see what his timing uh, and his adjustments were. Unfortunately for me. Not moving your head means you get hit, hence my two hits I took. Yeah, that makes sense. Were you at all, you know, did the, were you at all bothered by those knockdowns? No, like, were you um, I, got, I did not see no stars. Uh, I wasn't no one of that war, war, war that you get when you get rocked. I didn't have any of that, so I didn't have any of that issue. So I stood up. If you watch when I get knocked down in between – getting knocked down uh, and getting up, you see me look to my corner and I look at my trainer and I go, I know what I did. I know where I screwed up. I've got this. Yeah, and then you came out in the second round and um, made those adjustments and um, got that knockout, you know. Yep. Um, the one thing, the difference in the second round, what he did, he actually came forward. In the second round, he came forward. So he did he did what I was expecting him to do in round one, but he ended up doing it in round two, which benefited me. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, talk to me about um, BKF si BKFC Thailand, um, your experience with the organization, um, with Nick dealing with Nick Chapman, um, the CEO. Um, man, like Nick, Nick is an old school fighter. So uh, he, he's an old fighter from back in the day. So he knows what fighters want to be, how they want to be treated. And he treats them very well. Um, there's never any, we never had any issue. Any time that I needed something, I could message him for it. Cause he, he's like, I am wakes up very early in the morning. I uh, wakes up early in the morning. Any time that I've ever needed anything, it's always less than an hour, less than two hours that he always has always responded, which is great. Um, when we were down there, he actually treated us like we were, we, he knew we were there for a purpose. Any of the restaurants, everything that we wanted, they could tell us where they were at. If you needed to go to a sauna, we knew where the sauna was. So everything was on a timetable given to us. A lot of shows that you go to, you will not get a timetable. All right. You need to be here at this time, here at this time, here at this time. Nick actually gave us all that a week ahead of time. So we knew what we had to do, when we had to do it, everything, like five, seven days before we even got there, which was amazing. Most shows do not do that. Yeah, I, I, I imagine, I imagine that's really helpful. Yes. It was definitely helped out because everywhere you go, you've got questions. And Nick, even some of his helpers like John Henry, would tell us exactly, okay, if we can't get a hold of Nick, we get a hold of John. But it was always very rapid when they would respond to us. Yeah, that, that's that been my experience as well. Um, I have talked with Nick Chapman a good bit, and he's always quick to respond. And yes always on the ball with everything and it seems like he never sleeps so yeah <laughs> that's yeah, uh, it's cool. yeah promoters have to be that way it seems like because i know dana white with the ufc there's plenty of stories about how he never sleeps um and i'm sure he's that nick's the same way um yeah, well you gotta get things done though that's right um so moving on um i know that your goal is to get the BKFC Thailand heavyweight belt, um, but yes. you also have plans, it sounds like, to go to and fight in the U.S. for BKFC. Um, yes. Are there any – I know your mindset is just line them up and you'll um, fight every single one of them, but is yep. there any <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Is there any particular name on the tip of your tongue for BKFC Thailand or BKFC U.S. that um, you're looking to fight or um, – or are they all just names to you? They're nobodies to me. Like, line them up. Line, I'll start at 10, 9, 8, go all the way down to 1. I'm okay with that. Line them up. Line them up. Let's prove a point. Uh, the one guy that I would love to fight would have been Tyson Fury and Bare Knuckle because he's the Gypsy King. Might as well. I mean, if he's he comes from that Gypsy background. He says he wants to do fights uh, – He'll do exhibition fights. Oh, cool. Call it an exhibition fight. I'll call it a statement. No problem. I'm 100% okay with that. I'd fight Francis Nagano and Bare Knuckle as well. Like, you can line up Arnold Allen, Dylan Klecker, uh, all the different ones, Mick Terrell, everybody. I'm okay with it. Tell me you fight next weekend. Cool. Let's do it. Line them up. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that. That is a uh, promoter's dream right there is someone who's always willing to fight, always, always willing to get in there. Um, and I know that you're looking at already making a quick turnaround and having a Muay Thai fight in June. Are there yeah. any, is there any news on that? Is there any um, updates in that regard? Um, we're going to wait. We're going to wait two more weeks uh, and see the, how the, the cut looks, which honestly, it's actually looking great already. Uh, but I'm looking to fight Muay Thai in June, turn around, fight bare knuckle again, uh, and then potentially go to Australia uh, and fight down there as well. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, 
you've already got a lot of fights planned. It sounds yeah. Like. I don't I don't like downtime. I'd rather I'd rather stay busy and active the entire time. Yeah, any um, I gotta sit back and do nothing. I get bored. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, I know that you have trained and competed in a number of um, striking martial arts um, fights, yes. but I'm curious if you have seen um, what's called slap fighting. I have. Is that something that you would be interested in at all? Is that Does that make sense to you? Or is that well, just something that's sort of out there that, you know, nothing that you would be interested in at all. Well, I mean, I did, I fought three versus one, so slapping fights is just another another way to compete. The only problem with slap fighting, yes, I understand the idea behind it, but one thing I don't like about it is I, I'm not able to defend myself, and I'm just sitting there getting slapped. I don't like the idea that I can't potentially defend myself and just take straight brain damage from being slapped. We're seeing guys actually get knocked out in slap fighting. And they're like, oh, no, it's just a slap. We can still knock you out. It's just, just straight brain damage, not being able to protect yourself and getting hit, which is not a great thing. But, hey, I'm all about watching it. I'm all about cheering them on and supporting them. It is, it is you know, sort of oddly fun to watch, even though, like you said, yeah, there's no defense whatsoever. Um yeah, it, it's it's interesting yeah, to watch. Know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've been in Thailand for about eight years now. Is that correct? Uh, going on seven. Going on, going seven. on seven. Okay. Yep. Um, so I know that you originally came to um, get more opportunities in Muay Thai and try to have some world championships and all of that. Um what has made you stay? Like, what about Thailand has uh, sort of kept you around, and um, why do you enjoy it so much? Everything, man. I love, I love Thailand. For me, the best combat sport is Muay Thai. I have always loved Muay Thai, and then when I got the chance to come to Mecca to actually train in Thailand and do it full time, I took the opportunity. Um, I got to come over here and actually compete in Muay Thai. And when I was in the U S I would get like one Muay Thai fight every six, eight months. And then when I got here, I was getting five and eight plus fights a year and it adds up very fast. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot more opportunities over here to stay active, especially in that yes. sport. That makes yes. perfect sense. Because um, I, actually, I actually was one, I was trying to get away from MMA, get away from anything other than kickboxing in Muay Thai. And then since I've been over here, I've actually gotten to the idea where I actually want to go back in MMA again just to stay more active. I don't like downtime. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so when you came over here, um, and obviously you've been here for so, so long that it's not – that much of a difference now, but when you came over to Thailand, what were some of the cultural adjustments that you had to adjust to? And are you still, um, how fluent are you in Thai at this point? Do you, can you speak the language at all? Um, I can understand a good portion of the language, but I'm deaf. I'm half deaf in one ear. So hearing the tones, I don't hear. Um, if they if they speak very fast, I'm not going to be able to pick it up. Uh, but I'm able I'm a, I'm able to understand enough to where if I'm ordering food, if they want it, they want this. We want we want spicy. Do we want sugar? Do we want different odds and ends things that we want? Uh, I'm able to understand and get by. Sometimes in the middle of training, my uh, coach No, he'll actually speak to me in Thai. And it, he speaks very good English, but he'll speak to me sometimes in Thai when he gets frustrated. And I know, I know what he's talking about, where I'm screwing up. So I'm able to understand a lot more than when I first got here. That makes sense. Um, and were there any sort of culture, cultural adjustments you had to make any sort of um, 
big changes that you noticed moving from America to Thailand? Um, one of the difference over here, a lot of a lot of places when you hear you don't have to cook your meals often. Um, a lot of your you can go out and it's very very cheap to go eat, eat at a restaurant rather than cooking at home. Now, don't get me wrong, you can you can have a you can cook a great meal at home, but most places over here don't have the kitchen, or if you got a kitchen, it's the outdoor kitchen. Uh, that was one of the big ones for me was go right down the road at any time of the day and get a meal. That was the probably the biggest culture difference for me because I like to cook and I like to eat. But then over here, you can go to your restaurant down the road and get a meal 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Interesting. Uh, yeah. One thing I know over here, like fight-wise, the idea that Back home in the U.S., it's not often that I get a lot of pad work because I hit hard and do I love to kick. But over here in Thailand, the trainers are like, oh, you like to kick? Let's go. Keep kicking. Let's go. Because they enjoy it. They love the idea that we get to come over and get to train. Over here, you can train full time. You don't have to worry about waking up, go to the – go to work a nine to five or a work second shift, work third shift, and then try to fit in your training schedule. Over here, you're able to go, I'm here for fighting. Let's fight. And I love that. I love the fact that every time I turn around, you always have different guys from all over the world, even top level to beginners. You have multi, multi-time multi world champions show up, and it's the guy right next door to you on the bag. And he might be a six-time, seven-time world champion. And you've seen him fight on TV. And then you just look over, and then there he is doing the exact same thing for you, helping you out as well. Yeah, that makes sense. It's definitely Thailand, <clears throat> excuse me, Thailand's definitely a Mecca um, where basically every fighter, especially in the striking background, wants to yeah. go there. Um, um, like and- Everywhere you go, like the one thing I've noticed over here, you'll have guys from all levels, even top level boxers, uh, to kickboxing, to Muay Thai, to MMA, to basic regular boxing, to bare knuckle, even jujitsu. Like every every aspect of combat style sport, you're going to have somebody uh, in that sport around you which is great. You always got different levels, which I love. I love the fact that when I go to class, there could be a guy in there who could be a great, a great kicker. And I might be able to pick up and learn even just a little bit of how to get my kicks better just by one guy or hell, even one girl showing up. You got uh, Ness. I know I know I'm screwing her name up. Uh, Ness, Nessie uh, from one FC. Uh, darker girl, curly hair. She fights over here and uh, she trains over here in Phuket. And I love watching her because she's always got great cardio and just go, 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 which is great. Yeah, yeah. Is that Anissa Mexen? Is that right? She just fought a couple weeks ago. Yes, she fought the uh, blonde girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to her. She um, She's a solid, solid fighter. Um, yeah. and, uh, out, outside of outside of the ringer cage, one of the nicest people you ever meet. Always smiling, always will look at you and smile and nod, and always in a great mood. I've never once seen her in a bad mood outside of the ringer cage. Yeah, that's that's always great. Um, yeah. Is it hard? I know that a lot of people come to Thailand to train, but I uh, I don't see there being that many people your size to train with um is it hard finding people finding heavyweights training in thailand Um, at all yes and no um yes i'm a big guy it's it's oh no matter where you go in the world it's always going to be more difficult to find guys my size unless i go to Holland or Amsterdam or one of them guys where it's a lot more dust kickboxing style. Uh, but it, they trained eh, they trained very differently compared to the Muay Thai style. 
I prefer when they train the Muay Thai style. I like training with smaller guys because they're supposed to be faster than me. It's not about getting hit, hit hard. If I'm training and we're fast, if you are fast, if you're middleweight and I can keep up my speed fast as you, I should be able to, in a fight, fighting a heavyweight, I should be faster. So that's one reason I like over here with the smaller guys because they're fast and it's a lot more moving and you have to, I have to adjust a lot more than just stand in front of you hit me, I hit you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so you, um, it definitely helps with um, speed and with footwork and all of that um, helps yes. you um, in that way. And I'm sure that being punched by lighter people instead of being punched by heavyweights um, helps with some of the mileage as well, I would guess. Right. Why, why take the brain damage? I'm going on almost a 20-year career of combat sports. And I prefer small. I prefer sparring smaller guys because I can do round after round after round, and I do not leave with a headache, which that's something I do enjoy. I like. I don't get me wrong. Big guys are great to spar with. Big guys hit hard. Why do I want to go home every day with a headache or a small concussion every day and lose brain damage? I'm okay with that. No, I like that. Smaller guys move differently. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so changing gears a little bit, I know um, if you do any bit of research on you that your favorite food is tacos. Um, oh, I love tacos. <laughs> more specifically, um, Taco Bell. I know that I know I heard you say in one uh, podcast that you once ate like 50 in one sitting. Um, yeah, that was way too many that day. <laughs> so I'm curious if, um, you were to go somewhere and they were to have a taco bar, um, what would you put on your taco? First of all, would it be um, soft shell or hard shell? And then, and then after that, what um, would you put on the taco? Um, I prefer I prefer soft shell, but if yeah. they have hard shell, cool. Let's eat it. Um, I man, I love beef tongue. Like beef tongue, oh man, it's great. A little bit of cilantro. Some, I, you got to have cheese on it. I don't care who you are. If you don't eat cheese, something's wrong. Cheese is great. Cheese. Any is particular one of the kind of cheese that you prefer on your taco, or? I'm a fat kid. Just give me cheese. I'm happy. I just just sprinkle it, dump it on there, goop it on there, spread it on there. I'm happy. More cheese, the better. Um, I like beef tongue. Uh, I like shredded. I like the ground. I'm okay with all of them, honestly. Yeah. I never, never really complained about. I love, I love taco truck style tacos. To where it's authentic style tacos, I love them. Uh, whenever I go to Taco Bell, the one thing that I will get every day is a soft taco supreme. I absolutely love soft taco supremes. I always have, and I'll continuously get as many as I can. It doesn't matter. If, it, if there was a Taco Bell in Phuket, I'd eat there every week. I know I would. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think there's that many Taco Bells in Thailand. I think you found one in Pattaya when you went to the fights. Yep. But, um, like you said, I, I don't think there's any in Phuket. Um, so you're not able to go there as much. There's a couple in Bangkok and there's a couple in Pattaya now, so which is great. So that means that they'll be in, they'll be in uh, Phuket pretty soon, which I will definitely be one of the first people there to add me some tacos. Man, that that's exciting. Um, before yeah, I, let I you, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> before I let you go, um, are there any sponsors that you want to thank? Any people you want to shout out? And how can people follow you on social media? Um, yeah, uh, some of the sponsors I'd like to shout out to would be Phuket Top Team. Phuket Top Team is where I train at in Thailand. I've been here for seven years. I absolutely love it. I get treated great. I love it. Uh, Booster uh, Fight Gear, they're the ones that help me with the gloves, shin guards, any kind of equipment. When I'm holding pads, tie pads, boxing shields, body glove, you name it, 
They've helped me out and get any time material, even my gi for jujitsu. Um, I definitely like, I really appreciate them helping me out. Uh, Gorilla Supplements. Gorilla Supplements are the ones who give me all my protein power, my glutamine, anything that I need nutritional. If I have any questions, I ask them and they're immediately able to, to get me what I need. Usually they respond very short time. Like, all right, here we go. We'll get it for them. Um, let's see. Phuket Top Team Booster, Gorilla. Uh, Phuket Dog Park here in Phuket. Um, they actually the ones who help watch my, my three dogs for me. They're my little babies. Um, if it wasn't for them, I'd, I'd go insane. <laughs> uh, Potato Cookie and Hongi, they're my little buddies. Um, got get sponsored on Instagram. Burma Doodles, I'm going to, I'm very bad about how to pronounce It's like the Fleur Burma Doodles. They're one of my sponsors out of Louisville, Kentucky area. Uh, if you're if you're looking at one of those hyperallergenic uh, designer style dogs, hit them up. They're on Facebook, I believe they're on Instagram as well. Um, but I would definitely recommend them. I know the the owners of the company, and I've never seen some people treat their dogs as well as they do. So that was something that I was really happy about, really pleased about with their sponsor. They've even sent dog treats and uh, snacks over for my dogs over here from the U.S. just to where my dogs can benefit from some of their support as well, which is amazing. Um, Jack and Dave, Jack and Dave in Pattaya, they're actually the ones who did all the uh, the sewing on my uniform, on my shorts, because I was not allowed to use – because I usually wear tight jeans in a fight. But they said that there wasn't allowed for BKFC, so we had to convert it over to shorts. Took all the sponsors, put it on, and went from there. I think that's it. Awesome. And how can people stay up to date with what's going on with you? How can people follow uh, you on social media? One of the easiest ways to follow me on social media is Instagram, uh, at Panda Banks. One word, no space, no dot, no lines, none of that, just Panda Banks. Um. If you shoot me a message on there, I am the part I will respond. Don't tell me to go fuck your mom or anything or anything like that. Cause I just had that. They just, people just trying to run their mouth, trying to, to cause issues, which doesn't surprise me. Those I will not respond to. Um, if you, but if you do, if you do message me, I have zero problem. I will respond. It might take me a day or so, but I will respond. Uh, and then you got, I, you got Facebook, Steve, the Panda Banks on Facebook is my page. Nice. And I, like I said, I can second that, that you're very responsive um, and very sure. interactive. So, um, Steve, thank you for your time. Um, best of luck in your future fights and congrats on your win this past weekend. Um, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Take care.